Um, the Fed, Powell, maybe no interest rate increase this uh, this cycle, this month. Although they say, you know, inflation is still 4%. Actually, it's 6%. But they're saying it's 4 They want to get it down to 2 Not going to happen. What do you think will happen this week, Michael? Yeah, the Fed's been going to keep rates where they're at. Uh, at least for the foreseeable future. There's really no reason to keep raising rates. They were late to the cycle. We got 9% inflation, largely caused by Biden's spending. You know, a lot of that pandemic spending has come to an end and the Fed's not monetizing it anymore. And there are some lags associated with how long it takes for all the interest rate increases they've already implemented to take hold. So it looks like the data's been coming down. We've come, as you said, at least the way it's officially measured from nine down to four. And a lot of what's going on right now is you've got people renewing their leases on rentals, and that more than anything else is what's contributed to the recent inflation numbers. That's capturing the fact that we only renew leases about once a year. So everything else looks like it's even below four. So it looks like a lot of what they were looking to do was accomplished. But again, most of that came from the fact that we're not engaged in all this excessive pandemic spending anymore. We still have the long-term problem that we've got massive budget deficits and that's going to be inherently inflationary. But the Fed, it looks like taking the rate from essentially zero up to five has gotten a lot of the way there. The challenge if they go any higher is that we get even bigger problems in the banking sector, right? So because they raised rates so much so quickly and the banks were sitting on low interest rate long-term loans, some of the banks struggled. And so Powell's got to stop and let the banks, you know, basically recover and not create more of a banking problem on on top of the inflation problem that he was already giving Joe Biden cover for. Listen, uh, I, I think people are getting very nervous right now on all fronts, right? Certainly inflation, you know, when you take out uh, falling gas prices and just things you you buy every day, it's about 6 and 6.06%. You know, which is which is a, dis- a disaster long term, but then you look at the cost of money, and people can't buy houses now, right? So young people are really getting crowded out, and you've also got the crowding factor, Michael, where you've got all this now government spending, printed money coming in, cr- crowding out economic investment. Well, here's a concern I have also: also commercial real estate, right? Yeah. Uh, what happens if that starts to collapse? Your thoughts on that, Michael? Yeah, that's not a start to collapse. That is in the process of collapsing. You know, one of the side effects of all of the uh, work from home activity is that a lot of people don't go into the office anymore. That not only has implications for office space utilization, which uh, particularly like in Washington, D.C. and in New York City are way down, but it also has massive implications for the local retail establishments because there are a lot of places that pay the bills off of um, lunchtime crowds, people that are coming into the downtown area to work and then they're going um, lunch, they're, go- they're having food for lunch or they're going shopping at lunch or they're going to you know, some of the local uh, um, hotels or conferences, all of that stuff is struggling and that means that commercial real estate whose bills are paid from all of that rental income is starting to to look like there are some challenges there. And again, that not only has implications for the banking sector because a lot of banks have um, lent money to these office buildings, but it also has implications for anybody who's got real estate in their in their retirement portfolio. So that has some implications there. In terms of the broader inflation issues. You're right. The biggest benefit to inflation is that gas prices have come down. I was looking at the numbers just this weekend. A year ago right now is when gas prices hit $5 a gallon, right? And so the fact that they're down to $350 is a negative contribution to the inflation number. If that were not there, as you just said, the inflation numbers would have been a lot higher. So it it has to do with the fact that we've got this reprieve on oil prices because, you know, the war in Ukraine on behalf of Russia has not gone as well as the Russians help, hoped. And, um, you know, China has not fully recovered, which has taken some of the pressure off of oil prices. But after that, then you're right, we would see inflation numbers higher than they otherwise were. And so the other number let me throw in is that since Biden took office, prices have increased 15 and a half percent. 
right? So we, we can't let them off the hook just because a lot of the inflation that occurred in his watch was more than 12 months ago. That doesn't mean the American people aren't still suffering from it. But just to put that number in context, price increases over all of the Trump administration were less than 8%. We've got 15.5% just in the first 28 months of the Biden administration.